This machine I'm sitting in front of is the Onefinity Elite, and it's a four by four hobby machine. So it's a hobby CNC machine. Now there's a lot of people talking about making money on hobby CNC machines around the internet. And today I wanna to talk about the truth of that fact, like what it really looks like to try and earn an income or a reasonable income on a hobby CNC machine. And yes, it is doable. There's a few factors that we wanna take into play. First of all, what are we cutting and what's that profit look like between the material costs, the labor costs, and you know what we're getting out of it. Also wanna look at how I would set up a CNC machine. So we're gonna show you how we set up this machine for basically production. It's gonna run production for us for a sign business or a side sign business that we accidentally kind of fell into with our bigger CNC machine. When Maggie and I had our big CNC machine, we mostly just cut parts for other manufacturers, for ourselves, for our tools. The, there's a lot of money in just making small parts and that's really what that machine was designed for but when we decided to kind of retire or slow down we got rid of the bigger machine because we didn't really need a machine that was designed for production in the shop now one of the things that had happened is some of our business owner friends and some of the clients we did work for would occasionally ask us to make signs for their businesses and we started doing that and the material we were using is this stuff this is hdpe color core so it has different colors on the face and then the center and on the back. Now you can get it like this with just the two colors and the three sandwiches, or you can get it to like up to four different colors and different thicknesses. So it's a really versatile material. One of the other things that we did a lot was the same thing, but with like a brushed aluminum or a painted aluminum on a HDPE substrate, something. And we started doing this quite often and it turned into a pretty lucrative little weekend side business because it didn't take much time. And we were able to turn a tidy little profit on that just by working a few hours on the weekend. So much so that that's one of the things we didn't want to stop doing. Now we took a break from it, but now that we're all set up with the Onefinity, we're going to get back into doing this right away. Now some of you may have remember these. We kind of got into this after we found this material and started doing work for other people. And we started making some signs for ourselves that we sold online. Now the one downside to HDPE color core like this is it is expensive. It is no joke. But that said, that's a cost that gets passed on to the customer. And you can't beat the quality, the durability, and the look. And it's good for indoors or out, so it's pretty versatile as well. We'll talk more about the HDP and how we're using this towards the end of the video and start talking about some numbers, like some real numbers. But first, let's jump into the Onefinity and look at how we set it up for production and also a little bit of fun. The base was actually pretty simple. We built up, we milled up some maple and then we created two pretty beefy sides. Now, my buddy Mark came and helped us put this together, so big thank you, Mark. I really appreciate all the help that you gave us. Now, each side was put into position, and then we used some stretchers across it. And these are deep stretchers, so they're like one and a half inch by like six and a half inches. And then we screw those in from each side, making a really stable base. Now, because this is just a business machine for us, we're not going to put a complicated hold-down table. We're not going to do any of that. We're just screwing material directly to the substrate. So the MDF that we use for the top, it's just getting screwed down. One of the big reasons that we decided on the Onefinity is because it is a beefy, beefy hobby machine. It's got really thick rails, it's ball screw driven, and the gantry on this machine has three linear supports. So it is really strong, which means we're gonna be able to run this machine at pretty significant speeds. And you know, everybody knows the faster you can get something done, the more money you're going to make. The, that old adage, time is money, has never been more true, especially in the production world. CNC together is so easy. In fact, Maggie and Mark did most of it. It was just a matter of setting both the rails in place and getting those bolted down and then setting the gantry on top of that, bolting that down. And each position has four bolts, so it's not like you're going to spend all day with little bits of hardware and, and fussing around. Once everything was bolted together, Maggie went through with the wiring, which is really well marked and super easy to install. You know where everything goes. In fact, it's just like a socket fit. You just push in the wiring and you move on to the next. The other big reason that we picked the Onefinity Elite was the new Maso controller that they're putting out. The Maso controller for this system is absolutely freaking amazing. When it comes to user-friendly UI or user interface, the Maso is about one of the best I've seen on a hobby machine. 
So with this type of machine, you can just use a Makita router. Now you'd use the corded one, not the battery powered one, and you don't need to put a spindle on it. But because we're gonna be running this quite often and we wanna run it fairly aggressively, we really wanted to put a spindle on ours because we're gonna be running it for extended periods of time. And with just a typical router, you really wanna take breaks and give the router time to cool down or you'll keep burning up routers. The other side of it is we really wanted to keep this 110 and I did not want water-cooled spindles. I know a lot of people like them. I do not like the extra maintenance that comes along with a water-cooled spindle. A big thank you to Pwn CNC. They sent us a 1.5 kilowatt 110 spindle. That means we can run this machine for extended periods of time without worrying about burning up routers. We can run this a little bit more aggressively because it's a 1.5K spindle, which is a lot more powerful than the 1.25 horses that the small Makita router has. Another great thing that Pwn has is their dust shoe system for this machine. So it, instead of having the hose right in front, their system is designed to go in the back and it's pretty easy to adjust. Just loosen these two things up and you can move it up and down really easily. All this combined makes for a really nice hobby production machine and it has been a dream so far. We've really enjoyed using it. This is a little fun sign I made for Maggie while learning that new machine. And what I mean by learning the new machine is really learning what it's capable of, trying different bits in the machine, cutting different materials, testing different feed rates, and testing spindle speeds to get the optimum results. So whenever I get a new machine, I usually buy an extra couple of bits that I'm gonna break. All that means is that I'm gonna run that machine as hard as I can until a bit breaks or the cut quality starts degrading. And if the bit breaks, I back it off about 20% and that's where I run the machine. And I do that for each particular bit I'd be using on a machine in the material that I'd be cutting. I hope that makes sense. We spent the last few minutes talking about how we set up the Onefinity for our little sign side business. Now, how you set it up is gonna differ depending on what kind of business model or what kind of material you're gonna be cutting most often. Now for us, this made the most sense. And a big thank you to Onefinity CNC and to Pone for sending us this setup. This is really gonna make what we wanna do very, very doable. At the beginning of this video, we were focusing on HGP and that's because that's the material Maggie and I are using for our side business. Now there are a lot of different things you can do with this, including wood products, other types of plastics, and even some non-ferrous metals could be cut on this. So there's a lot of options available for business platforms. This is what we know, so this is what we're talking about. And I wanted to give you guys some ideas of numbers, like real numbers, what we can expect to make using this machine to make signs. So we're gonna talk about what we know. Before we jump into numbers, I wanna preface it with, these are just numbers. So we're talking about what the machine is capable of cutting, what the potential is using HDPE for making signs. And remember, this is a hobby thing that Maggie and I do on the weekends. It's not something we do full time. We really don't have any interest in getting out in the world and marketing ourselves as a sign company. But if somebody was willing to do that, there's a pretty substantial amount of money to be made doing so. But it takes work. Owning a CNC machine and cutting some signs is not going to sell signs. You have to get out there and sell in order to make money with a machine. That said, let's talk a little bit about the numbers that you could expect at least for what we can expect here locally by making signs with this material. The cost of this color core HDP quarter inch, so you know, yellow, black, yellow, and other colors in that realm is about $130 a sheet. So roughly five, $6 a square foot, which doesn't sound terrible unless you're buying seven, eight, 10 sheets to keep in stock so you can make your signs quickly. Then that number can get pretty big. Now, if you jump up to like three quarter inch material, same stuff, you know, different colors, obviously it's more expensive. Three quarter inch stuff sells for over $400 a sheet and you charge accordingly. Locally, there's only one other sign company that I know of that's cutting HDP color core for signs for people or doing custom work. And they charge roughly 35 to $40 a square foot for three quarter inch signs. Now those are rough prices and it's gonna depend on artwork and all those things, but you can figure that's about the average price. So if this is only costing us five or six dollars a square foot and we know that we can get competitive prices at 35 to 40 dollars a square foot on custom work, if we come in at 30 dollars, we're under everybody else and that's still a pretty significant increase in material costs. So we get some serious profitability there. The one thing to keep in mind is that there's other costs involved like running the machine, maintenance in the machine, bit cost, cost of bits, those things. So we always tack on another four dollars per square foot. So we're at $10 a square foot for the board and the tools and everything we need to cut it. We can sell it for $30 a square foot. That means we're making an average net profit of $20 per every square foot. 
Now, what does that mean? Like, what does that really look like? What does that mean in time? Now, when you're cutting HDP or alike materials, there's a pretty standard feeds and speeds. So that just means how fast the bit is spinning and how fast the spindle is going down the cut. And that's 200 inches a minute, and you want to keep your spindle speeds at about 20,000 RPM if you're cutting with an O-flute, which is a standard bit for this kind of material. Now, with those feeds and speeds in mind and the average size sign, with those average feeds and speeds, if we're cutting 4 foot by 4 foot material, which is the machine size on this, we can figure that 16 square foot. Now, punching all the numbers, the average time that it's going to take to cut that out is roughly 45 minutes on this machine. Now, that will definitely vary depending on the complexity of the signs that you're cutting. If there are a lot more material being removed, obviously the time goes up. If there's less, the time goes down, and you adjust your cost accordingly. But the average time to cut out a 16 square foot or 4 foot by 4 foot board of signs with HDPE for us runs right around 45 minutes. Now it takes a little time to put the material on and take the material off, so we call it an even hour. Now if you multiply 16 times $20, which is the average profit, we're talking about $320 an hour to cut signs. That's not too shabby. The one thing we want to preface is that that doesn't include design time and that doesn't include cleanup time. But that said, while the machine is running, we can be designing new stuff, we can be cleaning up the, the last batch of signs, so those times are kind of overlapping, if that makes sense. We're still roughly making $320 an hour at those averages. Now that can go up and down depending on the material, the sign, the job, all those things. But that's a pretty fair bet when it comes to making HTP signs on a machine. Obviously, you have to get out and sell yourself to get to work, so there's that. I realized there was a lot of talking in this video, but I didn't know a better way to do it. I don't know how to, I didn't know how to get across to you the value of businesses based on hobby CNC machines. They are there. You can make money doing them. Bottom line is, is it comes down to how hard you're willing to work. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found some value in it. Now, one little announcement before we go here. Maggie and I are going to start putting out a CNC-based video every four to five weeks. And those videos are going to revolve around home-based businesses and the potential for Mike making money with machines at home. Whether that's a hobby machine or a professional machine, we're going to be talking about all those things. Now, we'll make it very clear in the thumbnail and the title that we are talking about CNC's because we know that's not for everybody. And if that's not you, no worries. We'll have another video up shortly after with the jigs, fixtures, talk, and tool talk like we always have done. But if you are interested in CNC and you are thinking about it as maybe a way to supplement your income or create an entire business, we hope that these videos will be very valuable for you. We have a lot of experience in the CNC world and turning that into income. And we'd like to share that with everybody over the next 18 months. So, that said, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.